Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about butyrate. There's a lot of talk about butyrate these days. Let's see why that is, and also let's discuss some important things that you need to know about this very important compound. When we eat fiber, much of it is indigestible, which means that it makes its way undigested through the small intestine and then into the large intestine. But in the large intestine, or the colon, we have friendly bacteria which eat these fibers and release what are called short-chain fatty acids, or SCFAs. There are several of these that get produced, like acetate, propionate, and butyrate, and some others, but we especially focus on butyrate because it has some special capabilities above and beyond what the others can do. We ourselves can't make these, so we depend on our gut bacteria to make them for us but we must eat fiber in order to make them. Our ancestors ate mostly plant fibers because plants can't run away from you, unlike animals, which they did eat, but it was only occasionally, since they're hard to catch. So the friendly bacteria in our gut evolved to eat these plant fibers from fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. However, in modern cultures, much of the diet is now lacking fiber. So what happens? Well, the butyrate producing bugs starve to death. So why do we need to be concerned about how much butyrate we make in our gut? What exactly does butyrate do for our health? Well, for one thing, butyrate keeps the junctions tight in the gut lining. Why is this important, you might ask? Because with stress and antibiotic use, the junctions loosen, causing leaky gut, which creates an intense immune response as infections start to grow and leak into the bloodstream, along with dangerous toxins which were meant to go into the bowel movement. Both of these conditions create inflammation, leading to every disease you could think of. And if that's not enough, the butyrate helps the immune system determine whether it needs to launch an attack or not. Butyrate is one of those signals that our body has evolved, which works by communicating constantly with our immune system. It's called crosstalk, and it's one of the compounds that can actually talk to the bacterial strains to determine if everything is okay or if an immune response is needed to be launched. In other words, it determines if there are enough good strains there, and if not, is there a disaster in the making where the gut becomes overrun by pathogens that could cause infections which could kill you. And it gets even better. Inside our gut, we have a thick barrier of mucus called the mucin layer which protects us from pathogens that would love to get through the gut lining and into the bloodstream to infect us. There's a very specific species that lives inside the mucus called Acromancia mucinophilia. This means mucus lover. These live in the mucus layer and they produce acetate, propionate, and butyrate. So when you eat plant fibers, which travel undigested all the way through the small intestine into the colon, you'll be feeding the butyrate producing bugs. And these bugs release the butyrate, and the butyrate soaks from the lumen, the inner part of the intestines, into the mucus layer. But it can go even deeper. It can actually soak down even further and reach the blood where the white blood cells are. And the white blood cells have evolved receptor sites specifically for butyrate. This is astonishing because our body cannot create butyrate, so why would our white blood cells have a receptor for something we don't make? because we co-evolved with these butyrate bugs. For thousands and thousands of years, people have been eating plant foods. So we've had this constant supply of butyrate, which allowed our immune systems to evolve to the point where the white blood cells have these receptors specifically for butyrate. Now here's a very important point. Pathogens do not make butyrate. So this means that if there's plenty of butyrate present soaking down into the blood, then, this is telling your body that everything is okay. There's no pathogens and all the good guys are in place which release the butyrate. But what would happen if the butyrate levels were to drop down to the point where they're not saturating the blood? Then they're not telling the immune system that everything is going okay. This triggers the immune system because it now starts to think that there must be a problem. Because if there's no butyrate there, and butyrate is only made from the good guys, the friendly bacteria, that you're being overrun by pathogens that have overgrown. 
So basically we have this alarm system to tell your immune system that if the butyrate begins to drop, then it means you're overrun with problematic bugs. Our human evolution never counted on the fact that humans would stop eating fiber-rich foods though. So now in this modern era of processed and fast foods, we're basically turning on the immune system because by accident, we're taking away the alert system that tells the immune system that all is well. We're starving out all the butyrate producing bugs, which not only keep our junctions tight, but also alert the immune system that there's a problem. Because the body is now on constant alert, the inflammatory process kicks up and the immune response also revs up, causing a self-inflicted immune response. But butyrate also does something else that's incredible. Researchers have now discovered that it turns on the production of mucin, the very barrier that we need to keep harmful pathogens from seeping into the bloodstream. Butyrate literally keeps up the mucus barrier, which supports the acromancia. The mucin, a slippery secretion, which is the key component of mucus, supports acromancia. So this entire system of gut mucus, tight junctions, and signaling to the white blood cells are all made possible by one thing, plant-based fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. Here's a list of the foods which are butyrate friendly. In the first category is pectin, and this fiber is found in apples, grapefruit, carrots, blackberries, plums, apricots, cherries, raspberries, longberries, currants, beans, peaches, and sweet potatoes. The next category is cellulose found in broccoli sprouts, bok choy, yams, hikama, beets, sunflower seeds, alfalfa sprouts, squashes, sweet potatoes, cassava, taro root, turnips, parsnips, and radishes. The next category is resistant starches, which consists of navy beans, kidney beans, black beans, lima beans, legumes, pearled barley, chickpeas, peas, lentils, rye, and millet. The next category are the anthocyanins, which are the purple and red foods. These are blackberries, blueberries, cherries, plums, purple sweet potatoes, black currants, pomegranate, raspberries, mckee berries, purple cauliflower, purple asparagus, dragon fruit, red onions, and black beans. And in a category all by itself is oat bran. Now, in addition to these butyrate producing high fiber foods, you can also produce lots of butyrate by consuming raw honey and ghee. One final and important note, do not take all the butyrate supplements which are out there on the market. They're synthetically made and don't contain that vital life energy which we call prana in Ayurveda that is found in foods and herbs because they're somewhat toxic to the liver because they're the synthetic toxic version of the real thing found in fresh food and herbs. So I hope that you found this information useful to help you understand a little more about the gut microbiome. I'll be writing about this and much more in my upcoming book on Ayurvedic child rearing, which will be out in early 2026. Stay tuned. Thank you.